Conformational flexibility plays a critical role in protein function, and the overall goal of time-resolved electrospray ionization hydrogen deuterium exchange mass spectrometry is to probe rapid structural changes that drive function in ordered and disordered proteins. This method can help answer key questions in the structural biology field, such as the characterization of transient protein conformations that's not amenable to classical high-resolution techniques, such as X-ray crystallography and NMR. The main advantage of this technique is that reactions can be monitored on the millisecond timescale, which is important for characterizing loop regions, molten globules, and intrinsically disordered proteins. The implications of this technique extend toward therapy of neurodegenerative disorders, as they often involve the misfolding or aggregation of intrinsically disordered protein regions. Though this method can provide insight into weakly structured proteins, it can also be applied to other systems, such as enzymes undergoing catalytic turnover or the characterization of protein-protein and protein-ligand interactions. To begin this procedure, laser ablate an input channel for introducing the reagents, a proteolysis chamber, and an output channel on a standard PMMA block using a laser engraver. Following this, cut a 30-gauge stainless steel metal capillary into two 10-centimeter pieces using a rotary tool with a 1 64th-inch thick cutoff disc. Use sandpaper to smooth the ends of the capillaries, which can be facilitated by viewing under a light microscope. Now, melt the capillaries into the etched PMMA block using a soldering iron. To construct a continuous flow time-resolved kinetic mixer, insert a 40 cm fused silica glass capillary into a 28 gauge stainless steel metal capillary of approximately 15 cm. Next, produce a 2 mm notch using low power laser engraver settings on one end of the inner glass capillary and seal this end of the inner glass capillary. This is a critical step that ensures orthogonal and efficient mixing of the protein which exits through the notch with the oncoming deuterium. The 2 mm intercapillary space between the notch and the end of the capillary is the mixing volume. Attach appropriate sized fittings and tubing sleeves and incorporate a T connector which will be used to deliver deuterium. Next, line up the inner glass capillary with the end of the metal capillary which can be facilitated by viewing under a light microscope. Mark this as the 0 mm position. Attach this kinetic mixer to one end of the mixing T. Then, attach a 40 cm fused silica glass capillary to the opposite end of the kinetic mixer on the mixing T. For pepsin activation, suspend 20 mg of pepsin from porcine gastric mucosa in 1 mL of coupling buffer. Add 50 mg of NHS activated agarose beads to the resuspended protease and rotate gently overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. On the following day, spin down the mixture at 1000 times G for 2 minutes at room temperature to collect the resin. Then, aspirate the unbound protease. Following this, incubate the agarose in 1 mL of blocking buffer and rotate gently at room temperature for 1 hour. After collecting the resin and aspirating the blocking buffer, Incubate the pepsin agarose with 1 ml of 5% acetic acid for 5 minutes. Spin down the mixture at 1000 times G for 2 minutes at room temperature to collect the resin. Then, aspirate the supernatant. After repeating the previous steps for a total of 3 washes, store the beads in 1 ml of acetic acid at 4 degrees Celsius for long-term use. To assemble the device, Fill a proteolysis chamber with the slurry of activated pepsin agarose beads in 5% acetic acid using a sterile spatula. Place the PMMA microfluidic platform in between two blank PMMA blocks as a cover to seal the device, lined with silicone rubber to create a liquid-tight seal. Use metallic clamping plates to pressure seal the device. Then. Attach the mixing tee to the inlet of the device using the appropriate fittings. Now, flow 5% acetic acid through the acid line at a rate of 10 microliters per minute. Then, flow 50 millimolar ammonium acetate buffer through the protein line at a rate of 1 microliter per minute. 
Couple the device to the front end of a modified quadrupole time of flight, or QTOF, mass spectrometer using an adjustable insulated stage to achieve optimal electrospray conditions. After setting the ESI MS conditions, acquire a pepsin only spectrum. Next, introduce 50 to 100 micromolar of tau or phospho tau protein at a rate of 1 microliter per minute where the 50 millimolar ammonium acetate buffer was previously flowing. After allowing the system to equilibrate for at least 10 minutes before acquisition, acquire a protein only spectrum. While the tau or phospho tau protein is flowing, introduce deuterium oxide at a rate of 3 microliters per minute via the T connector and allow to react in the kinetic mixer. In order to increase the labeling time, manually pull back the position of the inner glass capillary to achieve mixing times of 42 milliseconds to 8 seconds, allowing the system to equilibrate for at least 10 minutes in between each pullback. This animation depicts the workflow for a typical experiment. Protein exits through the notch and mixes with the oncoming deuterium. Backbone amide hydrogens are exchanged during the allotted reaction time, which can be varied by pulling back the protein capillary. The reaction is then quenched and digested on a microfluidic platform containing an outlet ESI needle. The resulting spectrum contains digested protein. The percentage of deuterium uptake is calculated for individual peptides and then mapped onto the 3D protein structure. Digestion profiles of native and phospho tau were similar, yielding a sequence coverage of 77.1 and 71.7% respectively. The best fitting isotopic distributions and the associated deuterium uptake values for four sample peptides are shown here. Observed kinetic plots of percent deuterium uptake versus time for each peptide are used to extract the observed experimental rate. The calculated random coil profiles are shown for comparison and are used to extract the theoretical intrinsic rate. As expected, no protection factors were observed in the range normally associated with secondary structure elements, confirming that native tau exhibits weak internal hydrogen bonding. Significant protection is observed at the N and C termini, the central domain, and the aggregation prone regions. In hyperphosphorylated tau, a general increase is observed in deuterium uptake across the protein. There are significant increases at the N and C termini and in the hexapeptide II region. Degree of protection factors are colored as a rainbow scheme as shown here. Once mastered, this technique can be done in a few hours if performed properly. While attempting this procedure, it is important to use reagents of HPLC grade or higher to minimize contaminants as they can interfere with analysis. Following this procedure, other methods such as covalent labeling, chemical cross-linking, computational modeling, and docking studies can be performed in order to map three-dimensional protein structures or confirm areas of protein-protein and protein-ligand interaction. After its development, this technique paved the way for researchers in the field of structural biology to explore intrinsically disordered proteins and domains most common in neurodegenerative disease. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to use time-resolved electrospray ionization hydrogen deuterium exchange mass spectrometry for the study of protein structure and dynamics.